When it comes to using colors in your work and trying to make your work look like a professional artist's work, you need to break it down to simple steps. Start with just one color. So the artist we're going to be looking at today is called Maxu Lichni. He's a really fantastic artist. You can take a look at his Instagram page if you don't understand what I'm saying. You'll just pretty much see colors that will just blow your mind. So first, we can take a look at his image and you can see the main color in this image is blue right now so his first choice of color is blue that's just what he's using to establish the mood in this image and then the next color you're probably going to notice is this hot orange right here which is a contrasting color and then you can see other colors around the image like green a little bit of purples and all that so why this works is when you have your first color as blue when you have blue as your first color the immediate contrasting color to blue is orange so which is this and that's why he has his entire image is made up of blue and then he has the point where he wants to draw focus in his image as orange because those are the contrasting colors and naturally wherever is contrasting with color is where your eye is going to look at especially when you have a big image that's comprised of the opposite color of the contrasting color if that makes sense and then just to support the orange he has a little bit of yellow going right here with the hair and some yellow in the flame as well and to support the blues he has greens here and a little bit of purples um right here in the shadow why that works is because green is a harmonious color with blue and what harmonious color mean is the colors they're sitting on the same side of the color wheel so you can see green and purple are all sitting pretty much in the same space as blue so whenever you use those colors in an image the image is just going to look pretty much harmonious that's why you can see it has yellow here with the hair and yellow is right close to orange so it just works now this particular image is pretty much built up with just using harmonious colors because his base color here is blue and we can see if we choose blue right here as the base color all the other colors that are surrounding the image like the purples the greens all of them are all sitting across they're sitting in the same line as the blue and using this kind of color scheme is just really good for making your image just feel like all the colors are sitting together there's no really there's no point that's actually pulling focus so what you have to do is use a little bit of lighting to push focus in different parts of the image where you want the viewer to look at so that's what he's using right here you can see the greens here are pulling focus to that part of the image and the blues around the eyes and the purples are all pulling focus to this place this part of the image this has the most amount of blue and then you can see the next areas around it is purple and then we have some greens just covering around that purple so pretty much going to be using the colors thinking of exactly how you want the viewer to look into the image to guide the viewer you're guiding the viewer's eye through your image so coming into this image i already knew that i was going to have to use a lot of green in my image if I wanted to cause contrast and then I'm going to use red somehow because green is the contrasting color of red and then I know that Wolverine's color is yellow and a bit of orange and he also has some brown on him because of the particular costume that I'm going to use so I'm pretty much just setting up the mood for the entire image so first off I just like to start with green and I just filled in a little bit of different shades of green there's some dark green desaturated green and then towards where wolverine is which is the point where i want you to look at the most i have my uh pretty much the brightest part the most saturated part of the green and then i started using some purples and some blues for the background making sure that i'm just keeping all those um harmonious colors together just making sure that my entire color scheme just works now i was actually thinking of making the image only two colors which was going to be just green and oranges but i tried this and it just didn't look quite right so i came back and started all over again and right now i'm just trying to use um kind of a spotlight setup where there's a light source hitting the sentinel's uh face just lighting that up and then that light source will kind of bounce off into the rocks and then i'll have um wolverine lit separately with kind of um, a light source that will showcase his entire full figure his body and everything because for comics you can play around with lighting but you want to make sure that you're showing all the characters colors and their costumes are showing across the entire page so the person can immediately understand um what character they're 
they're looking at in a page or what character they're looking at on a particular cover you don't want to have your full lighting just take over everything and we can't even differentiate characters we can't differentiate the background from the character and all that you always want to make sure you're nailing that separation with your characters and your backgrounds and making sure that the characters are local color so like moving his local color is yellow you want to make sure that that local color is somehow seeping through whatever light source whatever lighting setup you're using in your image and then the next thing i was thinking of doing was having a little bit of a reddish lighting setup in somewhere around where that green is around the sky so i just figured out that i'll just use it um up at the top where there's some free space i'll just use a little bit of red just to make mix it up make that place um somehow uh have some red there just to push the amount of contrast that i have in my image now what i love doing when it comes to rendering characters rendering comic pages rendering covers is i like to use just the lasso tool and the soft round brush i don't really use any other texture brush and i've seen a lot of people asking how i use the lasso tool uh what settings my lasso tool is and it's pretty much just the default setting the only thing i have turned on is anti-aliasing because i love to have my edges a little bit rough when all the edges are smooth and i zoom inside it just looks too smooth for me so i love to turn on the turn on or off i think it's turn off i love to turn off anti-aliasing so i can have some uh, rough edges the edges are a little bit rough whenever i'm using the lasso tool so that's the only thing i have turned off and then my airbrush is set on normal but sometimes i like to turn on noise for the airbrush but i don't usually do it that much it's just sparingly it depends on the image i'm working on for this particular image there it doesn't really need that much of texture that much of noise and all that so i'm just using the plain um soft ground airbrush but for some particular images or when i'm doing something that isn't really a hardcore comic style if it's just an illustration of a character that doesn't have a lot of blacks in it i love to use a soft round airbrush and i will turn noise on for that particular image now the next thing i'm doing here is just using the screen layer screen and the lighting layers and a little bit of color dodge just to make the spotlight brighter and I put those two layers at, at the top there above all the other layers. So it will make sure that the blacks are getting affected by the effects. Because if you put your screen layers or linear dot layers below your line art layer, it's not going to affect the blacks. So you make sure that you're putting that layer at the top, at the top of all the layers above. That's where you have the full effect of the screen layers. Now, one thing I always love to consider is keeping in mind the ambient lighting setup especially when it comes for comics because on a comic page you can't really uh get away with using a lot of fancy lighting and a lot of just uh hard blacks or hard shadows you always want to make sure that we can see the character's face even though you're going to use dark shadows you have to create your shadows in a way that there is light enough for us to understand what character you're using so you don't want to have too much blacks or too much darks in your characters only if you're making sure that those blacks are the darkest parts of the characters and there are still mid tones and light tones around where your character is so we can still read the character from the mid tones and light tones now most times when i'm current coloring um pinups like this I don't really separate the layers that much so just the background on its own is on one layer and the only thing i'm doing that's on a different layer is wolverine himself he's on a different layer and then the clouds at the back are on a different layer as well every other thing is just mixed on one layer and then i just clip each of the other layers onto um the background layer or the cloud layer now right now i've already started um detailing the clouds and this is really just easy what you want to do is think of the points of interest and then you create your curves create your circles and then you render away from that point of interest so my point of interest is 
that small spot towards where Wolverine's claws are, that's the brightest part. And then as I'm receding away from those parts, the color is becoming less brighter and less saturated. So you can see as it heads up towards his head, towards the sky, I lose the amount of saturation I have in that green and it's pretty much fading a little bit and becoming less saturated, less dense. So that's what I love to do, especially when it comes to playing, uh, painting clouds, coloring clouds. That's the way that I love to do it. And then the next thing I like to do when it comes to painting clouds is to select a shape. So you have one shape and then you paint that shape and then you select a shape slightly above that and then you paint the hardest into where that shape was intersecting the previous shape. So that's how you, that's how I, that's how I always get these uh, kind of Uh, milky flowing looking clouds so right now i just started off by setting a rim light on wolverine and i painted in a little bit of the color of his costume just to set up the yellow and then i started focusing more on the rim lights to just nail that the next thing i'm doing is just thinking of the light direction where the ambient light source is coming from and then i'm rendering the other parts of his costume using that ambient light source from the top now another thing you want to consider when it comes to rendering characters like this is thinking of the elements on their body elements on their costume what parts of the costume are reflective so for wolverine he has a lot of metal on his costume and some parts of his costume too i'm going to make them a little bit reflective like his boots i'm just going to make it just a tad bit reflective not completely reflective but just a little bit so how i'm doing that is when i select the when i select the boot i paint that and then i'll select lightly just slightly around where the light source is coming from and then i'll use a color that's close to white but still related to his costume color so his costume his boots are brown so i'm choosing a brown that's kind of closer towards white and then i'll brush that slightly so it will make it look like it's glowing it's, it's it will make it look like it's metallic and that's exactly what i'm doing right now i'm just brushing in lightly how that will look and you can see it looks like it's metallic so right now the color is not white entirely but it's just close to white and then i just do that for every other part of his costume that uses the same brown but i don't do the whole metallic um thingy for all the parts of his costume just where i want to draw focus to and then the next thing is just to render the remaining metal elements render his claws and that is really it's pretty much easy rendering um metal in comics you just want to nail your light source and make sure that you're having some reflections and bounce lights in the parts of the metal where there's shadow and essentially sometimes you might want to um paint in the color of the line art you might want to paint the line art color to be kind of blue or towards whatever color your metal is but for this image i'm not doing that i'm not changing the colors of the uh, line art itself because there's a lot of black in the image so if i start changing colors with one part of the blacks it's going to cause a little bit of an imbalance in the amount of blacks that are in the image because if i change the color of one part of black in the image i'll have to think of what other parts uh of black and the image that i want to change the colors of because just changing the colors of black is going to really, it really pushes the work a different direction so if i were to change that shadow in his arm because it's black if i were to change it and put the skin color there what's going to happen to the shadows that are in the uh, shoulder pad shadows are in the cloth and all that so you really want to consider why you're making certain changes to an image and if those changes are actually worth it so the last thing i'll do is just to paint in that red in the sky pretty much just painting uh little details around the image like the uh a little bit of electricity on the plug a little bit of electricity around the plugs that are getting so if you learned anything from this video make sure you leave it a like and leave a comment down below with your thoughts your opinions any questions you have you 
regarding pertaining using color any other thing just leave a comment down below with your questions i i reply all my comments that's not even a problem and subscribe to my youtube channel if you're new here and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out Now I gotta ride or die